for those who guys watched my last video you will know at the end of that video i have shown something so you guys did watch it so you all don't know but i was buying a new telescope and so here is the unboxing video of it For those who might be wondering, I live in India and in India if you want to buy Dobsonian telescope then there are many authorized sellers of it. I bought it from Tejraj and Co. If you want to check out some Dobsonian telescope or interested to buy one then you can go and check my link in the description below. He is an authorized seller of Dobsonian telescope and I bought it from him. This package contains woods which are cut in different kind of shapes and which will be assembled to make the Dobsonian telescope base, the base on which the telescope will sit. And right now I am cutting the package in which the wood contains so that I will make the base out of it and then assemble the telescope. Watch the whole unboxing video to find out what all the packages comes with. There are a lot in this video. Just watch it. Don't skip. And now this package contains two aluminium plates and a roller bearing. The aluminium plates will be placed in between the two bases of the telescope and in the roller bearing the telescope will spin freely. This roller bearing is given so that the telescope can spin without any kind of friction or anything and it will spin very smoothly. Believe me the roller bearings are just amazing. They contain a lot of rollers and they are just amazing. Here are the two wooden base. On one base the telescope will sit and on the another base we will attach the feet and that base will sit on the ground and on which the telescope will spin freely. And there is the handle that will be attached in front of the base of the telescope. Although in my opinion the handle is not much of that of a practical use because no one will pull a 12 kg of a base using a thin handle. And now here is the tray in which we will keep all the eyepieces. We will attach the tray to the side of the base and they have given some screws with it. And this package comes with a lot of screw as you can see and also it comes with many different kind of tools such as allen key and using that tool will lock all the screw. And this is a main screw which we will use to lock the base and also make it free so that it can spin. Here I am displaying all the screws that come with it and also I am reading the manual because this is my first time assembling a Dobsonian telescope so I have no idea how to do it. Just please forgive me. Here I am attaching the feet with the main base using the screws and also my father is also assisting me with this job because this is not a job that a person can do single handedly and also this is very tough. Believe me it is really tough. You buy a telescope and it will take more than 2 hours assembling if you are a beginner and like that. So we have actually assembled all the feet and now my father is displaying it. I am now putting the aluminium disc in between the main wooden disc of the telescope and also putting the roller bearing in between the aluminium disc on which the telescope will spin freely without much friction. Now here we are using all the screws we are assembling the base so that we can put our optical tube assembly on this although this video is in fast forward if you still don't want to watch it then you are free to skip to the good part
all right we have attached the side plates with the front plate and now we are gonna attach everything to the bottom plate and make half of the base ready And now we are putting the top of the base to the bottom one so that now the base can spin freely. My dad is having a hard time putting this because this thing is really heavy. Believe me or not, this is really heavy. And now I am attaching the main screw so that this screw will help us lock the base in place and also make it free so that it can spin smoothly. And so I am assembling the screw and the washer in it and then putting it all together. As you can see, as I tighten this, then the base stays in one place and doesn't move. But if I loosen it, then the base moves really freely. This is how we will lock the azimuth axis of this telescope. Now my dad is helping me attach the tray to hold the eyepieces using the screw that is provided. This is the Philip head screwdriver that we are using to lock this Philip head screw. And now this is the handle that we will attach to the front of the base of the telescope and I am attaching the handle using the allen key and the allen screw is provided with the handle. And now comes the good part. I am cutting the seal of the main telescope box. This box contains the OTA or the optical tube assembly and many other things. And now taking a look inside the main box we find many different stuff such as the optical tube which is really huge and two side bearings which we will use to attach the telescope to the base and also the eyepieces and many other components we will check out them later. First let's talk about the side bearings. The two of these are provided and we will attach these two to the sides of the telescope and this thing will help us to attach the telescope to the base. Here is a hardware that will help us attach batteries and then run the fan that is provided behind the mirror. We will check this out later. Here is a box. Let's see what it comes with. It is a 35mm extension tube provided for additional back focus. This will help us while we calibrate the finoscope or while we watch some terrestrial based object using this telescope. Here is a moon filter because watching moon in a 10 inch telescope will be really hard and it will be painful for our eyes so they have provided a moon filter although I already have a moon filter but now I have two of them I don't know what to do with both. Here is finroscope bracket we will attach this to the top of the telescope and attach the finroscope with it. Here is another box let's see what it comes with. It is a 9mm closer eyepiece for higher magnification such as watching planets or craters of the moon. We will talk about this later in details. Also here is a very large box. I hope this is another eyepiece. Let's check it out. Yes, it is a 30mm super view eyepiece. As you can see this thing is really huge and also this eyepiece is multi coated as you can see for reducing chromatic aberrations while watching some bright objects. 
here is a really large box let's see what it comes wow it is a white colored findroscope this is an 8 by 50 findroscope and it is not an easy finder it doesn't have any red dot it is just an optical finder with crosshairs for better precision while calibrating and also finding targets in the night sky And now my father is destroying the plastic package of the main optical tube assembly. As you can see, this is a really sleek and glossy white colored optical tube provided by GSO. Here is the Crayford style focuser, we'll check it out later. And now he is removing the telescope out of the box. And now the telescope is being placed on the table so that I can give a better view of the telescope. Sorry for too much exposure, fixing it right now. This is the Crayford focuser with 10 is to 1 precision for prime focus. And also, as you can see, the cooling fan is provided behind the main mirror to cool down the optics really quickly in a hot day. This is the findroscope bracket housing. We will attach the findroscope bracket on this using the screw that is given on there. Here is a hardware to attach the side bearings to the optical tube assembly. I am unlocking the screws using the allen key. As you can see there are some graduations on this hardware it is for balancing the side bearings while attaching the side bearings we can balance it if we want to put some heavy stuffs in the front such as a DSLR camera or some light stuff such as a very light eyepieces this is a amazing technology and now we are attaching the finder scope bracket to the bracket housing and locking it with the screws provided and now I am attaching the findroscope to the findroscope bracket. As you can see, there are two locking screws, and also this screw will help us to calibrate the findroscope. And a third screw, it is equipped with some spring to give some spring compression to the findroscope so that it stays in place. And now the historic moment of all we are putting the optical tube assembly to the base of the telescope as you can see the telescope is fully assembled it is looking really amazing it is gonna be one of my favorite telescope if not the most favorite telescope I will mostly use this for astronomy and not for terrestrial photography of course because this is an astronomical telescope so things will be upside down while watching in this telescope and this telescope is amazing as you can see it has locks and many different kinds of components we'll talk about them now now let's see the components in a detail here are the two eyepieces that is provided with this telescope. Here is a SuperView 30 or a 30mm SuperView eyepiece which has a really great eye relief. This is good for watching nebulas and galaxies and also stuffs which are wide and require low magnification to watch. As you can see there is a greenish hue to this eyepiece while watching from an angle which shows it is multi-coated to remove all kind of chromatic aberration while watching. This is a 9mm closer eyepiece. It is good for watching stuffs which require high magnification to watch such as the planets, the craters on the moon and also many different kinds of things. Here is the 35mm extension tube. It comes in a really really tight packaging, very hard to remove. I don't think I have to talk much about this because this has not got much job other than providing some additional back focus while calibrating or while watching any terrestrial object. Seriously, if you know any other job of this thing other than these two, then let me know down in the comments. And here is the moon filter. 
which comes with the telescope moon filter is really really necessary in this telescope because a telescope with 10 inch aperture can soak in too much light and watching moon in the brighter phases can be really really painful for the eyes so glad that they have provided the moon filter although i had it before if you know in which video i have shown this to you that means you are a really great guy congratulations here is a hardware that will help us attach batteries to it and also will work as a power source to run the fan which is provided behind the optical mirror as you can see it takes eight batteries i think it is just too much because eight batteries is too much to run a small fan but i don't know maybe it is necessary so let's put the batteries in and check it out as you can see here is a plug which we will plug behind here and once we plug it the fan will start this is a type of exhaust fan that is it removes the heat from the optical mirror and thus cools out the optics really fast which is useful for hot days but it is not much of an use during the winter which is going on now so i don't think i'll be using this much right now this telescope comes with a lot of paperwork by lot i mean a lot here is a telescope guide which you will read to understand different types of telescope it will make you clear about the different concepts related to the telescope and also make you comfortable using one this is a great booklet everyone must read this here are some postcards which they have provided there are three of them inside and i don't want to open it i am feeling lazy for this here is a collimation guide this thing will help you understand how to collimate a reflector telescope a reflector telescope requires a regular collimation or the mirror will be out of alignment and you won't be able to see everything properly and also things will appear blurry this is the main instruction manual which i have used to read and also understand the different parts related to the telescope without this you can't even assemble the base of the telescope this thing is very necessary here are some catalogs and also some charts of messier objects and also objects that you can find in the night sky and also the time when you can find them these are really amazing high quality pictures Here is 110 Messier objects. This has given the location of the 110 Messier objects and also where you can find them in the night sky. On the back side, you can find information related to those Messier objects. This is a complete Messier catalog. This is the most interesting thing that is provided with the telescope. This is a star chart. Putting the data such as the month, the date and the time correctly, this gives the data of all the stars that is up in the night sky in that specific time, in that specific location. Now this is a star chart. Yes, you heard it right. This is a complete star chart. I mean this is literally overkill. They have provided a complete star chart with a telescope and in this star chart you can find many different kind of information about the stars this is a literally treasure if you want to go stargazing and stargazing is one of my favorite hobbies so this is gonna be my treasure i think and here is a large catalog of the great globular cluster this is literally amazing this looks really amazing now here is also another interesting thing this is something that i will hang in my wall and watch it every day this is a lunar atlas yes i have lunar atlas in my book and also i have made a video about lunar geography if you didn't watch then go to the i button and then watch it and this is the complete lunar atlas i will hang this in my wall and watch it this telescope is not perfectly collimated although the secondary mirror is collimated as you can see but the primary mirror is out of collimation as you can see the red laser should be inside that hole 
but it is not. We will collimate this telescope. Follow these steps to collimate your Dobsonian telescope. If your telescope requires time-to-time -time collimation or is bump sensitive, then it will have these following screws, the white locking screws. As you can see, I am gradually unlocking these white screws so that the telescope mirror will become loose and we will be able to collimate them. And now these are the black collimating screws. These screws have springs inside them and spinning the screw, the laser will move around. This is when the mirror is moving. Our goal is to make the laser go inside the hole so that the laser can no longer be seen. This is when our primary mirror will be perfectly collimated. As you can see, I am spinning the bunch of screws and trying to put the laser inside the hole. At first, it will seem to be a time-consuming process. Yes, it will take much time just trying around spinning the screws so that the laser can go inside the hole. But gradually, as you will grow up in experience, this will take not more than 5 minutes. It is taking much time for me because I am still a beginner. I just bought the telescope and I am collimating it. So in the meantime, I would like to tell you to subscribe to my channel like this video and share it with your friends or family members. If you like this video or have any queries then you can comment them down below. I check all the comments of you people. Your support really motivates me to make more and more content. Now as you can see our telescope is perfectly collimated that is the laser is no longer seen. Now. I will lock the white screws so that the mirror gets locked and stays in one place so that it doesn't get out of collimation again and again. And if it get hit or get bumped then it will again be out of collimation because my telescope is bump sensitive. The mirror will not move now and my telescope is perfectly collimated. As you can see the laser is no longer seen. Wait, do not leave right now. Now I am going to show some of my captures which I have captured using this telescope. They are literally mind blowing. So watch this video till the end. Well, this is my first ever Newtonian telescope. Then, why do I have a laser collimator lying around in my home? Even if we fall, we will rise up and